everybody. Happy Saturday. We're live. I was waiting for Matt um, because he said he was going to be running a little bit late and I thought, you know what? I say hi to you guys for the first little while anyway, so we'll just, we'll just do it. I'm ready. And then Matt will come in whenever and I'll just let him get set up and we'll just kind of hang until he's ready to rock and roll. So, um, we got a flight. Oh, I need to turn the notification sound down on the phone. Let me do that real quick. And then I'll say hi to you guys. Okay. I usually don't have my notification sound on. He just turned that off. But dang. Okay. Hey, guys. I almost said beautiful whiskey folk, which you are, but that's for the V pub. How you guys doing? I'm doing super great. Let's see what's up. Foul scrap. Dang, this is more or less Aquavite time, but at least some, uh, at least for some time I'll be with you. Yeah. Yeah, I go live almost the same time as Roy, about 15 minutes later, so. Uh, but on different days, obviously. <laughs> okay. While you're waiting, oh, thanks, IC86. Go watch Shayla's review of the Wafer Reserve Offerings. Good review. Thank you. Sugar Kitty. Shayla sent me <laughs> from the Shayla Patreon stream. <laughs> Actually, that Patreon stream was really fun, and I just uh, went through the two blind samples that Matt sent me, just trying to figure out what those were. So I'll go through them on here, too, but now I kind of have my my bearings at least a little bit. Um, also, I'm, like, super hungry right now. Uh, I ate before the stream, well, actually, a few hours ago. Um, I've got myself a little fig bar, so I might have to dig into that a smidge. Um, John De La Cuisine was over there, too on the Patreon stream. Thomas Jones. Hi, everybody. Hi, Thomas. Hey, Frank. Pete Head. Hey, Tim. California. Um, I always think that you live in Canada because you're, it just looks cold on your little photo thing, but, oh, that was me saying I'm running a couple minutes behind. Also, I was going to wear contacts today, and my contacts were just bugging me so much on the Patreon stream that I was like, not nah, putting on the glasses. Cheers again. Thanks, Kevin. It's good to see you over there. Um, living in fog, uh, fog and smoke the last two days. Oh, goodness. Is it? Yeah, I, I saw Adriana's post in, I think she was in Utah, and uh, she had a ton of smoke. I, is there a fire over there uh, going on? I literally have no idea what's happening in that neck of the woods, but... <laughs> Mike, Fank, Mike, ooh, Mike Franklin. Hey, Mike. Good to see you again. Scotch down under sent me. There you go. <laughs> Donald Rands. Good afternoon, folks. Yeah, that was cool. We were on the, I, I wasn't on there, but I was just in chat on the Scotch down under stream. Um, if you guys haven't checked out Ken over at Scotch down under, go ahead and just, just do it because uh, if you guys are Trekkies at all, that's probably a good place to go. Um, don't forget to hit the like button on your way in. Yeah. Ken is booing me. <laughs> uh, oh, that's awesome. It tastes like American malt. Yes. <laughs> oh gosh. Chat just jumped real hard. Let me see where we were at. Oh dear. Really? Okay. Let me just go there. Hey Yoda. Yo. Hi mom. How's it going? Hey Chris. Just saying hi to everybody. Hello, Menno. Guess who's back? We do not have a Menno quiz tonight. Thank goodness gracious, because Menno is just, he's too smart. <laughs> so, local fire. Okay, yep. Most of Northern California is blanketed in smoke from large fires. Ah, such a bummer. I got a 5 out of 10 on the quiz, which I'm somewhat pleased with. Yes, that's a super great Menno score. That's a that's definitely a pass on a meno uh, on a meno quiz. Pretty awesome, Mister Whiskey Shits from Livewire Whiskey. Adam, hello, Che Francis, how you doing? Oh goodness, I did I do my new patrons? I can't remember. Hold on one sec. Let me get there. Let me get there. Give me a second, guys. We've got Stephen Vaughn, Malt Minion just joined yesterday, I think. So, 
welcome to the new patrons. We just hit 61 patrons, which is just, just bonkers. It's just totally bonkers. I don't understand it. <laughs> um, yeah, Whiskey Trek. We got John T, John Trombetta. I got my mom. Uh, yep, Luke's 14 today. Yes, I, I, my little calendar notification went off and said Luke's birthday. Um, and I forgot to, uh, text you to tell him happy birthday. So happy birthday, Luke, if you're watching this. My little brother. So crazy. Uh, no, just a case of reading too many whiskey books. Definitely, definitely. Um, just had a couple glasses of Glenlivet Caribbean rum cask. Nice. Very cool. I'm going to do a little, little rundown. Matt's in the chat. I'm going to say hi to everybody and then I'll get him on in just a second. <sighs> Freaking live long and prosper guys. <laughs> yeah. He talks about, uh, he gets pretty into Star Trek. So, uh, I need to like get into it. Cause I feel like I'm into Harry Potter. I'm into Star Wars. I just need to like just do it. I just need to do it. So, okay, Matt, are you ready? Give me a little thumbs up if you're ready. Hey, Matt, good. how's it going? Good. How are you? I'm doing so good. I'm so stoked for this flight because I have not had a lot of these. <laughs> so this is going to be fun. Oh, absolutely. I don't, I, hopefully not. I'm excited to think of the first two blinds and then we'll do these, uh, fun american people yes yes okay here. so let me um so i had a sip of each of these on the patreon ah, uh, okay. pregame because i want to do like i like to get my head wrapped around them especially if i'm doing blind because it just takes me ages to figure out what i'm drinking <laughs> and i'm still wrong 99 percent of the time so <laughs> that's half the fun right yep yep so okay i'm just gonna pour fresh samples of each of these so what did you like, think so far of them so I'm like really curious what you sent me, honestly, because, um, yeah, I just don't, I have no idea. <laughs> oh, that yeah. was the whole point. It was, I gave yeah. you zero clues on what they were. Right. I have no idea like grain or anything. So, <laughs> uh, which is great. It's like, that's the most fun part. So, oh yeah, those are the best ones. And I'll, and I'll, I'll give you more as we go through them and see what you think. Okay, A little cool. bit of hints. But uh, I want to see what you just get from nothing and see where we go from there. Okay. So I've had each of these already, as I said. Um, so here, I'll just kind of tell you what I wrote down for All right. my notes, if that's okay. That works for me. So I think B1, so the blind sample one, okay. is uh, corn is the dominant grain. I okay. think it's from America. Um, okay. I think it might be around 100 proof. Okay. Um, and then just some of my notes, I got nutty. So it's a little bit nutty. And then I got, um, kind of like bitter and dry. Um, the texture is a little bit dry. Okay. Um, I said on the finish, uh, short to medium finish and then on the, uh, like balance or that sort of thing. I yeah. said it seemed a smidge over oaked. I'm not sure okay. why, but just, I was getting, and it was kind of weird because it seemed slightly over oaked, but not old. Like, you know, I've had old ones that are that are too much oak, but this yeah. seemed like slightly young. Okay. Uh, but also over oaked, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then I said a little bit of rye spice, a little fruity, and then just kind of those classic notes like spice, vanilla, caramel. And okay. then I also said uh toasted. Not that it's like a toasted barrel necessarily, mm. but it's like a little bit of like a toasted smell. Yeah, like you get like a piece of toasted bread or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then on my second go around, I got a tiny bit of like a little bit of a funkiness. So okay. that was basically what I got on it <laughs> for the first go around. So. Good job. So we'll see if <laughs> any of that is correct. Probably not. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go for another step of it just while right. well, I've got it. I think that's a, definitely a good start there on that. You, uh, okay. corn is definitely, you know, I don't really know if there's any other country besides America that's going to have corn dominant that would even, I mean, I guess Canadian could, but mostly it's going to be more rise than, and they do put a lot of corn in Canadian whiskey, but yeah. really and truly, I mean, you put some into blended scotches, but not enough, and you taste, and same with like blended um, Irish, right, you'll get right. the corn, but it's still not going to be the dominant grain per se. Right, yeah. Yeah, so. maybe in like a blended whiskey where they have like a huge portion of 
of grain dis right. distillate and then some malt on top of it. Especially but, young blended scotch or cheap right. blended scotch, which is generally lots of crappy corn and lots of metallic taste. And it's right. not good. Yeah. It has plenty of malt in it, but not enough to anything you want to be drinking. Because some of those are up to like 75%. But then usually mix in rye or wheat on top of that, along with the the malt, not right. just corn. So, yeah, it just depends on what you're drinking. But okay. yes, the good news is this is none of those. <laughs> I would not be mean and send you crappy scotch. Mm -mm. This is obviously not that. I figured not. Okay, and then the second one. Um, so I had a little less time with this one because I spent a little more time with the B one. Okay. So. On B2, um, let me just sniff it again before I say anything I okay. regret. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can't be wrong. No matter what you get, it doesn't really matter. It's it's right. all subjective. There's no wrong answers, per se, in blinds of what you smell is what you smell. I mean, it right. is what it is. Yeah. Um, so it smells sweet. So it smells like it has corn, but um, yeah. a lot of what I got on the palate, and then I just poured this fresh, but when it kind of opened up a little bit, I was getting a lot more rye. So I don't know if rye is the dominant grain, but I'm kind of leaning towards that so far. And then again, I think it's America. Um, I think it's a lower proof than B1, um, okay. it seemed. On the palate, I, got, I wrote, so it was a little bit astringent, and then I got, it was a little bit flatter kind of across yeah. the palate. Um, okay. There wasn't... The second and third sips, there was some spice, but the first sip especially, it was uh, quite a bit uh, more flat. Okay. Um, and then I got a tiny bit of nail polish remover on the palette at one point. Um, okay. And then I got some spice. I said spice, pepper, a little bit dry, vegetal. But then I later on, I also got a tiny bit of raisin. Uh, somebody else was talking about raisin in the chat, so I don't know if okay. it was just my mind playing yeah, tricks on yeah. me or what, but... Um, I'm going to do it again real quick just to see. All right. Yes. These are two totally different things, completely different. Okay. Okay. Um, the only, they are made at the same place. Oh. I'll give you that, okay, but they are completely different products. So, you know, that's not really helpful. I'm sure to tell you that, but. No, that's okay. It gives you a breath of what can happen at this distillery. Yeah. A lot yeah, of things so happen there. It's a little bit more sweet this this go around. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit less spice. Um, okay. I I don't know. I I would have a hard time saying like there's so many ryes that I've had that are just so much spicier than this. So to call this a rye just seems weird. But okay. Yeah, I want to know what this 100% uh, Canadian that was in a corn, 100% corn Canadian whiskey is. I, I do wonder what that uh. Oh, did somebody, was somebody talking about Chris it? Chris Wren was talking about it. He oh, says, okay. One of his top Canadian rides is 100% corn. I want to know what that is just for, to see, because I have no idea. So maybe this isn't, I don't know. It's super, um, I was just thinking about this uh, whiskey that I had that had malt in it. I don't know if this has malt in it, but it's got like, um, I said flat, but maybe I'm thinking like rounded, which I get a lot of the times on um, okay. malt stuff. It doesn't like tastes super malty to me, but it kind of has the texture on the palate of something like that. Um, okay. Let me see. All right. So you said it's called the 95 year old. Does that come to the U S I've never heard of that. No idea what that is from Canada. Who makes, is that a distillery? Who makes that? Or if that's just like a cheap uh, whiskey, if it's an expensive, I don't know anything about it. Huh? Interesting. Yeah. So I'm not sure on that one. I would, I would say maybe it might even be like a four grain thing. Cause I feel like it's got some corn sweetness. It's got like a rounded thing of malt. And then I feel like it does have some rye notes on it. Um, okay. So yeah, that's what I've got so far. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Let me think what I can give you that won't give it away. Let's think okay. about this. You want the proofs or not yet? Uh, sure. So I guess B1 was a hundred and I thought B2 was maybe like, 85 to 90. It just seemed lower. I don't know. The first one is 107. So okay. you're pretty close on that. Okay, 107. And then, hold on. I'll turn off the camera one second. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to just, just Yeah, what just, it is. no, no worries. <laughs> um, I'm going to tell you wrong. Uh, it is 93. So 93. Okay. Okay. You were close on that one. Okay, so pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty okay. close on both. So that's good. Okay. Cool. High distillers. Never heard of Highwood Distillers. Okay, interesting. Me neither. Huh. Something I guess to try someday. 
Yeah, I guess. <laughs> One of those things. Interesting, though, for sure. All right. So, like I said, same distillery makes both of these products. Okay. Um, one is done in a traditional oak. One is in, in a untraditional oak. Mm. So, what, one of them is a different oak that it's in. Oh, okay. See which one you think is the untraditional oak. Wow, this V1 is smelling so much sweeter. Okay. It's getting, like, sweeter every every minute. Okay, let's see. So, traditional and untraditional. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I really like B1. It's getting better. Okay. Yeah, B1 definitely does better with a little bit of time in the glass, for yeah. sure. Okay. Okay, so just because B2 has this kind of it has a little bit of a bitterness thing. So I'm going to just guess that that one is in the, the different oak. You, which one Which one you think is? B2. Correct. That is one of the different okay. oak. Yeah. So, of course, once you go to a different type of oak, you'll jack with what you're going to get as far as uh, grains. Right, right. Okay. Huh. Oh, this is so weird. This is so interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's so hard to guess. <laughs> Oh, I'm you're glad not that I can't guess because you, you have thousands. I would think zero. Yeah, yeah. As far yeah. as what they are. I wasn't even planning on guessing because I'm like, no, you have thousands of bottles. Yeah, but this I think is that's actually made endeavor. my blind assessment better because I'm not like, oh, I, it reminds me of this, you know, and like yeah. going off on a trail. I know that there's thousands that it could be. So I just kind right. of have been in the whiskey, which I think is good. It's It's a good... Plus, I chose things I know there was no way you ever had these. Okay, okay. The chance so, of it was so slim, it's just not highly yeah. unlikely. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's too much information. Let's see. How old do you think they are? Okay, so on B1, originally I said over-oaked. I'm trying to see if I still think that. I said oh. younger, but over-oaked at the same time. Like No, that's I, I, I think that's... Because of what it is, I think that's actually a good thing to say about it because okay. of what makes it up. So I know it sounds crazy. Maybe like three years old for B1. Um, let me see what B2. Let me see what I think. I'm very interested to see what you think. This, this is a this is a fun experiment because I've never blinded anybody with either of these. Oh, so cool. it makes us even better. <laughs> oh man, I don't know on that one. Yes, it's uh I this in, in fact this is the only whiskey I've had ever done in this type of oak. Wow. So I'm really yeah. curious to see what this is. Yeah, I know it doesn't really help. There's lots of kinds of oaks out there, and this, this is not a helpful. But at least give you something to intrigue about, for sure. Yeah, that's okay. And it, you can't give it away, right? No. Um, what fun is that if I give it away? Right. <laughs> that's That kind of defeats the purpose of the blind. For but give sure. the answer immediately. Okay, so, darn. It's got this kind of weird astringency, kind of, and then some other weird stuff going on I can't really put my finger on. Yeah, it definitely like it, is different. There's yeah. no doubt about it. I feel like it might be older, but maybe that's just because, not like super old or anything, yeah, but yeah. it might just be because of kind of what's going on on the palate that I think okay. that, but it might not necessarily be. So I don't know, maybe like four or five years, maybe. I don't know. Okay. That's what I'm going to go with. All right. Three years-ish or less on B1, and then maybe like four to five on B2. I don't know. Interesting. So far. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm really excited to see what these are. <laughs> All right. Let's see. What other clue can I give you on these? Okay. So give me the proof. You guessed ages. Yeah. Huh. Mm. What states do you think? What state do you think it's from? Oh, okay. All right. Um. So B1, I'm not sure because I have not had enough Texas whiskey. I don't know if it is Texas. But on this, on the second time around on the Patreon stream, I got a tiny little bit of funkiness. 
Okay. And then I, that young over oaked thing kind of made me think, you know, like Texas whiskeys get that really quick, you know, um, maturation. Yeah, that oak, right. Yeah, you get that. Especially like, on, I don't know, have you ever had Garrison before? Um, <clears throat> I may have had a sample. I've had Iron Root before. Um, right. Yeah, that's about it. So. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and that's exactly it. That it's, you um, know, it's not one of, that's not the answer. But yeah, that's okay. exactly what happens in Texas is because the heat here, and especially using the when most of them started to use those small barrels. Yeah, they get oaky as crap, especially yeah. Garrison. These little 15 gallons. So well, granted, I think they're 53s now, but when they started, yeah, heck, they had a the warehouse exploded early okay. on because it got so damn hot and they were using those small barrels and burned a damn thing to the ground. So, you know. Okay, so I, I know you just said it wasn't, but literally the only state that I could think that would be would be texas but only because i haven't had a m many american sure. you know whiskeys other than like kentucky or you know right. mgp or something so um that's that's where i'm going okay and then for b2 let me see i'll probably just pick a random state <laughs> okay man i don't know I have no idea. I'm just gonna like guess Colorado. Very like they're doing some weird stuff. So this makes this so much better <laughs> than I could have ever hoped for. <laughs> I, he's gonna pull out some like weird Japanese something, <laughs> and I'm just gonna. I don't know. Uh, nope. awesome. I'll give you another. Hint. It's from a major distillery in that Ooh. state. Really? Okay. And it's not Colorado. Okay, it's not Colorado. Yeah, it's not Texas, and it's not Colorado. You can knock those two off. All right, all right. I'll just. Where another to choose from? Um, God, what could this be? Maybe. I think. What else can I give you? Um, all right, I'll give you another hint. Okay. One is actually older than two. One is older than two. Correct. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. So, so this is. Oh, this is so crazy. Uh, yes, this is a major uh, plot graph. Of that. Yes, you will definitely recognize this state once we tell you what state it's from. Oh, damn it. All right. Yeah, this um, is one internationally would definitely know. Wow. So that's younger. So it's not New Hampshire. <laughs> Oh, Which God. I'm sure if we ask people in Europe, where's New Hampshire? Like, I don't know. So we're in the U.S. So, Texas, I know they can all find. All right. So I'm assuming B1 is around three years old. I still think it's young. I don't know. It does have that over-oaked thing. So maybe it's a little bit older. Fascinating. God, Just I have no idea. Um, so maybe that's like a little bit older. And maybe this is like one to two years old oh my god i have no idea um the state god i i haven't had anything from other states so i couldn't even i couldn't even guess um yes new hampshire is in the northeast gene you are correct like i'm just gonna guess random states like utah <laughs> utah i don't know i have no freaking idea Utah and I don't know. I don't know. This is so hard. Arizona. Nope. Just... <laughs> not Arizona, not Utah. Okay. I'm not good with states, so we're just going to okay. go with that as the. <laughs> and I haven't had anything from other states, so I don't okay. even know if I could recognize the profile, honestly. This is just fascinating. <laughs> I love the fact that this is how this is going. This is this is just this makes this so much greater for when the reveal is. Because I got about everything what it wrong about this with these. So much. Oh gosh. Okay. I'm really nervous now. This is Utah actually does make uh, well. High West blends their stuff with yeah I know with MGP. Mm -hmm. So although their own stuff pretty much blows, but uh, <laughs> that's a different story. Yeah. They're, oh, they're really weird. Like. Um, the Valley Tan is an oat whiskey, which I like oat whiskey from Koval in Chicago, which, you know, mm -hmm. Illinois is really, really good. The one from um, Utah is weird. It's not great. 
Yeah. They, and I've heard, I haven't had their single malt, but I heard it's also weird. So basically, they just, they're just really good at blending MGP into their own stuff to actually make it taste good. That's right. what it comes There are some other ones I've had from Utah. I can't remember them off the top of my head what they were that my friend brought back. They were actually really good. I think one of them is like a black corn or something like that. It was super oh, interesting. Neat. It was like it was almost like having like grilled corn. Uh, it was really tasty. It was an interesting thing. That's cool. So people are guessing Oregon and Washington. I don't know. I'm I'm trying to think. the The reason that I thought B one was maybe like Texas or something is it's got. It seems younger, but also seems a little over oaked, and that made me think. Not necessarily saying Texas whiskeys are over oaked, but oh, like, right, right, right. it can happen. You know, oh, uh, totally. just because of the temperature fluctuations. So. Absolutely. I think Washington and Oregon would would have maybe less of the, those t temperature fluctuations. I mean, this isn't super dark. Like, it's not right. like Balconis, like super, super yeah, dark. Yeah, so yeah. that could be a uh, potential. But honestly, I just, I haven't had any whiskeys from there. So to, to no. guess would just be just a shot in the dark, you know? Yeah, so. that, that's a whole other stream, a Texas stream. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, people are guessing Louisiana, Hello, Washington, Hawaiian Oregon. Peter. That would be fascinating to have a Hawaiian yeah. Peter. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. I would love to try that, but I don't know if there's a Hawaiian too. Peter. There probably is at this point. This seems to be wild stuff from every state at this point. Yeah, yeah. That would be really neat, actually, just to Let's see bourbon ball. Hey bourbon baller, how's it going? Hey bourbon baller. I'll see. What up? We're getting closer states. Yeah. It's not in the it's not in the western United States. Okay. So I went west of Texas. Yeah. So yeah. maybe I need to go east of Texas. Correct. Okay. So Louisiana. I'm I'm thinking it's south. I'm thinking it's south. I don't know. Maybe it's not, but Okay. Louisiana or Florida, maybe? Nope. Georgia? Nope. I have no idea. Oklahoma? I know Oklahoma's not east, but... No. They do make whiskey. whiskey. They're not bad. They make a couple pretty good whiskeys there. But no. Um, Arkansas? Nope. God. Well, there we go. <laughs> Volcano smoked. I want to try that whiskey. That would be cool. <laughs> we smoke our, uh, our barley with volcano smoke. That would be awesome. Oh, some people are saying Alabama. Is it Alabama? It's not Alabama. All right. Tennessee? Nope. God dang. Okay, just just tell me. I've given you all I got. <laughs> it's the most obvious state. They make 95% of... It's of, Kentucky? Okay. It's freaking Kentucky. Seriously? Seriously. That's what... Like I said, this makes this so great. Though. This, is, this is gone. <laughs> yes, this is in Kentucky. Seriously? Seriously. Wow. I really thought that that was like Texas style. I don't know. It's got a super. Like I said, it's got, it's in a weird oak. So that's why it's different. B1? Uh, no, B1's in a traditional oak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. B2 is in a, is a different, is, a, is an untraditional. So is B2 Kentucky or is B1 Kentucky? They're both Kentucky. They're both Kentucky. Oh my God. Wow. I mean, I should have guessed that first, right? Because that's like the largest right maybe they it make well like it. they make the most bourbon that's for so sure i said b1 was nutty yes b1 okay yeah so, let's do that. or i got a little bit of a nuttiness nuttiness so, okay i don't know if it's like heaven hill or jim beam nuttiness but i got a little okay. bit it's not little book okay Gene asked if it's a little book. It's not. Oh, okay. Now, little book does the. I uh, was at this. The fourth one has uh, brown rice in it. It's really. Oh yeah, I've had. Uh, uh, I think I had some of that. A sample of it. Of that one, yeah. And I guess the new Basil Hayden's has got some brown rice and a toast. I haven't tried it yet mm -hmm. with the toasted. That should yeah, be fascinating heard, to try. I've heard of that one? Um. Oh wow. So B one after going back, it kind of makes sense that it's Kentucky. I still, even knowing B two is Kentucky, it just doesn't. I'm like, what? <laughs> it doesn't make sense to my brain right now. But mm. wow, interesting. Okay, I'm gonna pour a little bit more of each of them because I'm running out because I keep sipping them trying to figure out what the hell they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. <sighs> B two. I just have no idea. I could not even. Wow. It's 
just too funny. Too funny. Let's see. Let me think what else I can tell you about them. Um. So, yeah, I mean, I maybe, like, Jim Beam or Heaven Hill. I don't know. Um, the youngest one in here is nine years old. No way. Yep. Wow. So B2 is nine years old? Mm -hmm. That's crazy. And B1 is older than that? I mean, I did get over oaked, but it seemed like younger, like the grain note on it. I don't know. So weird. Okay. Yes. That just does not even taste like nine years old. That's just yeah, it's nine years old. It is it is traditional recipe. Okay. Yes, I technically both are traditional recipes, just different recipes. Wow. What the hell? What the hell is this? I just have no idea. Nine years, and then this one is older than that. It is older. It's like 13 or 15 or something, maybe? Maybe. What the hell are you feeding me, oh, Matt? <laughs> you'd, you'd be disappointed if I didn't throw her something interesting. I know, that, right? That would just be like, oh, you sent me some regular crap. Would just She'd just be disappointed. No, it's totally fine. This is intriguing stuff. Kudos to Matt for throwing the curveballs. I know. This is crazy. Wow. Yeah, so, especially fun because you, you know, obviously mostly concentrate on scotch or other malted things. It makes it even more fun. Right. I feel like somebody else that does, um, you know, American whiskeys would. I mean, I, I do American whiskeys as well. Oh, right, yeah, you like, do. I focus more on Scotch, so right. Um, it's because I feel it's like better, I'm but slightly that's better at Scotch blinds, but yeah, these are these are definitely very difficult. Oh. I really. It, it's very fun because, well, you know, Scotch is better number one. So that, that's <laughs> that's a good reason. So you know, plus when you think about like American whiskeys, like the ones we're gonna do after this are all totally different. This is going to be really fun when we're done with this. Uh, all off the wall stuff after this, but it's what we had to do the blind first because they totally jack your palate up. But uh, yeah, these were fun ones. Like I said, you hadn't had, there was no way. If you had these, I would be completely shocked beyond belief. Like I said, I'll give you, it is a major distillery in Kentucky. God. I have no, B2 is not giving me anything to go on. <laughs> so okay. I just have to base it on B1, I think. God. They are not finished. They are, they, the second one isn't a strange oak though. Yeah. The whole time. Yeah, I didn't, um, I didn't write finished. And on the Patreon stream too, I said that I didn't think these were finished. Um, God, this is insane. Yeah, don't look back at the chat, but I will let Pete Pete head know that he does have the correct answer. Okay, all right. I got to make sure I don't peripherally read it. So he, it, just it, was a, it was a little, little while ago. Oh, okay, sure so he's probably up at the top. Feed. Oh, okay. Yeah, it should be past your screen. Oh, okay, good, good, good. I wanted to, I don't want to say anything until it's past the screen. Yeah, I just have DC's stuff and then John's super chat. All right, you're good. You're good then. Yeah. I'm good. Man, what the hell? What the hell? <laughs> I have no idea what distillery this is. There's not that many major ones. I know. I'm like, I really don't think this tastes like Buffalo Trace, to be honest. It probably is, but I, it just doesn't smell or taste like it. Okay. I could see why you would certainly think that. I don't know. Maybe... Maybe Heaven Hill. I get a tiny bit of nuttiness. It's not like, it doesn't remind me of Knob Creek, honestly. Okay. Yeah, Knob Creek's a pretty distinctive mm -hmm. nose when you smell that one. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe Heaven Hill. Night Pete Head. I have no idea. Night Pete Head. God dang, I have no idea. <laughs> All right, before I get Shay Lambert on the first two, we yeah, have six more to go through. Yeah. Just give me just give me a straight, Matt. All right, you want to know? Okay, I'll give you two first. All right. Two is the Chickapin Oak 
Chicken Char- no. Old Char Oaks. Yeah, this is the traditional mashed oh one. Oh my god. Yeah, I've never had anything from this. Yeah, story. so that's the, that's what that. So I knew. I was like, "There's no way you've had that." So that's no the, way. Uh, so yeah, it's nine years old. The whole nine years is in Chickapin Oak, and so it's just a totally different wild. This is the fourth oh. in the series of the uh, tri- old Charter Oak series. Okay. Okay. All right, you, you ready for what number one is? Go ahead. All right. It's Pappy 15. No way. <laughs> what? Yep. <laughs> you ought to be kidding me. Nope. Okay, well, this is my first Pappy, so thanks. You're welcome. Hey, Trev. What the heck? So do you get a tiny bit of a nutty note on this, or am I just going freaking crazy? I haven't crazy? poured it in a while. I, I haven't poured it since I gave it to you, to be honest. I can try. Wow. Okay, I feel like I need to cleanse my palate for this now that I know what it is. I just think, see, which is why I wanted to blind you on no, it. No, this is great, because to honestly... Tell, it also proves another point is, it's not that special. Yeah, like, I... I didn't think that it. I I said <laughs> a little First, over oaked. I also said young, which is yeah, I know not... it's like hilarious. I'm like, this is gonna be so great in the review. And then later I wrote thirteen fifteen after you told me what B two yeah, yeah. was, but I would never have guessed. I got I the proof that. decently, but yeah, yeah, I said you proof bitter, you were pretty close. Dry, uh, I said complexity was medium, uh, body and texture are decent, mm-hmm. like not. A wonderful yeah. but decent um slider slightly on the drier side low to medium intensity so like it really did not blow my socks off i yeah. like it better than b2 though yeah i kind of figured what wow how crazy my first sip of pappy this is insane this is just my mind is blown uh, yeah it's like I said it's because this is the first time I've ever had it prior when I got this bottle, I don't know, six months ago. Oh, <laughs> John, screaming. John oh. says she actually called it meh in the pregame. <laughs> so um that's apparently what I think about Pappy Van Winkle. How crazy. Just I love that I got to do this blind because I think, you know, I've over I mean, everybody does, but I, I have, like, wanted to try Pappy for so freaking long and have just overhyped it in my head. And for it to be, like, I mean, it's good. Like, I like it, but it's, like, it's definitely not worth thousands of dollars or even hundreds of dollars, honestly. <laughs> like Yes. It's, like, a, I don't know, maybe $80 bourbon. Thing. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean... His little kid probably just got back from karate class and she's hopped up on sugar, so. <laughs> oh my God, she's driving me crazy. She's like, oh, I need to eat. I'm like, then find something to eat, you psycho. I think I probably would have, I think we all do. Like, I think that's yeah. the whole point of blinds. I wouldn't and, judge it differently if I knew because it's so special and the thought of having an ounce of right. this when other people could never get their hands on it. I think mm. I would up it in my head way more. Um, so I'm really glad I got to try it blind. Yeah. Exactly. That's why I want to do this blind for you because I know you'd mentioned, I don't know, a couple months ago that, you know, you think it'd be so great. And I was like, I told you, like, it would just be meh. meh. It's all the end of it. And now the blind proves that I was correct. Yep. Yep. So it's, that's it's pretty good, cool. but it's nothing super special. Yeah, it's it is not good. worth chasing. And I, I think after it opens up, especially, I think it, it does get nice. There's a nice, like, balance of kind of like spice and sweetness and stuff, but nothing to chase like there there's no. better bourbons on my shelf that i can get and Absolutely. uh you know just are not full yeah, of headache the like <laughs> tax series is way better in general like well, especially if you're gonna go for weed go for william blue weller it's oh, so yeah. much better yeah the weller i have a sample of weller from jason and that's oh, nice. like one of my favorite bourbons like george c stag yeah. weller those are like some of my favorites oh. but <laughs> no worries the little one is going crazy. <laughs> um, bit disappointed you didn't get the 1950s Jolly Rancher note. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen that video, I can't even remember the name of the channel, but it's like a dude with a faux hawk reading notes off of his leg. Uh, and he says 1950s Jolly Rancher on uh, on a bottle oh. of Happy. Okay. Well, that's an interesting thing. 
I, I don't know. I can't remember the name. Guys, do you remember the name of the... Oh, it's yeah. gold. Like, it's, like, so funny to watch. Like, he's serious, but it's it's just comedy. It's just straight comedy. Josh Randall, I missed the pregame, and now late for the main event. No worries. I just found out that I'm drinking Pappy. Mm -hmm. 15. And I said that it was young but over oaked. <laughs> yeah, which is hilariously funny. Yeah. Um, so it's funny because I I got over oaked on this. Um, so I'm really curious like how over oaked I would think 20 and 23 are. Like I probably yeah. would not like them like at all. 23 is it's not bad. It's just so oaky, I don't care for it. It's kind of like uh, Brad from Cast Trinkets. It's really good with Dr. Pepper. <laughs> so, you know, it's like that. And, it be, wow. and because the over oak, actually, it makes Dr. Pepper taste good with it, which is hilariously funny. Uh, John, oh, whoops. John says, it's a YouTube classic. Don't remember the name either. Gosh, dang it. Yeah, like, right when I was getting into the whiskey journey, that somebody found that and just spread mm. it all over the place, that video. Okay. And I, I do not remember... I can't remember the name of it, but it's this sorry dude, but kind of just douchey looking guy with like a faux hawk or mohawk thing going on. And uh, he just, you can tell he's just read like, he's not nosing or tasting it. He's yeah, just he's reading just, off of a list like, of random shit. Like, it's got tea in it or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even real whiskey, which would be hilariously wow. funny. So thanks for sending this, honestly, because no problem. I have just, in my mind, just been like, oh my god, a bottle of Pappy. Like, I think everybody does it, just because it's They happy, do, and then know? every time, I think, it'd be, like I said, they psych themselves up so much that, oh, this is so amazing. And then they find out, they can't they can't get the pass to admit to themselves, it's not that great, number one. Right. Or that they're just like, they're, their blinders are on so greatly that it has to be the greatest thing in the world. Yeah. And the whole, the whole Van Winkle lineup, from the 10 to the 23, it doesn't matter which one it is, none of them are that special. Yeah. And the other problem is they're all Buffalo Trace made now. They're not actually from Stitzelweller anymore. Right, so, right. you know, who knows? Maybe, and maybe the original ones back then I heard were a lot better, but what's maybe, made yeah, today, back in the day, it's not yeah. worth, it's not worth chasing. Still not worth chasing. Yeah. Honestly, uh, guys, like yeah. ECVP, Stag Jr. I mean, I know Stag Jr. is hard to find too. William Leroux Weller or George T. Stag. Any of those are like worlds better than that. Oh like, yeah, it's not even close. It's like oh well. Great. A whole another. So if you've had Stag Junior, you don't ever need to have. Uh, no. This Pappy, you're good. Yeah, because all it really is is just slightly better Weller. And that's all it really is. I mean, yeah. it's all the same freaking mash bill. It doesn't matter. Yeah, their family picks it out and blah blah blah. But still, it's just it's and that's what you have to remember. It's it's just better Weller. Yeah. And yeah. it's still, it's not that much better, I don't think. Wow, so, so interesting. But yeah, well, uh, that's Orkin, so cool. I'm so glad I got to do that blind. Thank you. I that. am too. I am glad that it, it proved lots of points. That was pretty awesome. It was pretty great. It will go down. It's classic history. Uh, I like um, the 23, but the ones I've tried were pre Buffalo Trace. Oh, nice. Yeah, I've never had anything pre. I'll have to go to Liquor Hound's house and ask him if I can try. I'll take some because he tried. We had we the 20 together. A couple years ago, was it seven? It was a 2017 bottling, and okay. he, that one was pretty good compared to a lot of the uh, newer ones. He said, um, "But yeah, they're good." Chris Wren, uh, yeah, I've had. Have you had any orphan barrel shaler? Because Chris is asking about. I've had lots of them. Um, I've had, I fact, don't think so. I I may have had them. a sample once. I I I may have had a sample once, but I don't think so. I don't think I have. Uh, what I can say about orphan barrels is. Uh, if you can find them at the retail, they're generally worth it. I think the most of them are pretty good. Yeah. Um, some of them are over oaky, but not necessarily bad. Like, I still think the best one is probably Barter House. If you can get that one or Lost Profits, is long gone. It's really expensive, but if you can find it for a reason, it's good. Rhetoric's good. I like Rhetoric, but don't pay more than like 150 bucks for it. It's more than that. It's probably not worth it. Yeah. Um, but I've had, I guess, what, 21 through 25 of the Rhetoric. Okay. And they're good, but they're nothing. They're also nothing super special. Don't pay. Don't pay. I think I paid like one fifty was the most I paid for any of those. And I don't know if any of them were really worth even that. But if you can get them. It's fun to have. Because I mean, how many twenty four whistles can you get in general? Yeah. Josh broke out the old nice. Rip Van Winkle Glen for this. That's awesome. There you go. 
on my Patreon, I was so nervous because I know that you have just an insane collection. And I <laughs> I was tasting them and I was like, I really hope he didn't send me something that he like loves. <laughs> and I'm just no, like, oh, no. this is not that good. <laughs> um, I was really nervous. So <laughs> no, no, I, I it, it, it was to prove a point. Yeah. yeah. And it was uh, all I can say is that was great. That's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, All right, you ready so to drink cool. some peat? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, so since we're gonna let's stay with bourbon, we're gonna start with I'm gonna have you start with this J Riddle, which okay. is I forget what uh why. Let's see what I had that pulled up earlier. Where is it? Yes, why? Oh, Correct. Wow. So I have not had uh my patron saw me like rip open the so usually I like to kind of um acclimatize myself to each one before the stream just so I. I don't know. I feel like it's more fun and less stress. But I ripped open the things and poured them and then capped them. So I haven't yeah. had a single little sniff of it. Yeah, because so. that would totally have jacked this up today. For sure. It's a good thing, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, oh, Bull Run. Bull Run is really good stuff. I love oh, a cognac finish? Nice. That's yeah. got really good. I've only had some of the red wine finish. Those were awesome. Yeah, I've had... Um, I think I had a Chardonnay finish, and then nice. somebody sent me some red wine ones. Um, I might have tried a Chardonnay one at somebody's house. I can't. I had so many freaking ones. I can't remember at this point. But they got lost, so I wasn't able to try them. Sadly, oh. but the cognac one sounds lovely. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Glen Vass. Uh, well, the Evolution. That's a good one. I like that one. Yeah, my favorite. I have. I have a thirty year of that. Oh my gosh! And that's prior to them closing. It's amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah, buddy found that one in Kentucky at some random liquor store. He's like, it was cheap. It was like two thirty for a thirty. I'm like, yes, you should definitely buy that for me. Wow. That'd be great. That's a really good price. Wow, this smells um, like kind of perfumey or something. I don't know. Like, okay, Big Vic, kind of I would totally though. agree with you. Uh, just uh, stick a bottle of Weller 12 in a barrel for six months, and you got your Pappy 15, 20, or 23. I'm just saying. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty I think so. Much. All right. So this is Jay Riddle. This is a peated bourbon out of Michigan. Okay. So this one is 79% corn, 21% peated barley. So that is, and it's uh, up near Detroit, up near a little island. There's one, it's the first uh, since Prohibition. It's 91 proof. It's got this cool fox on it, which I think is really cool. What I call this bottle is really cool. It is There's a cool bottle. Of like really cool fiddly bits. Oh, they wow. spent a lot of money. But both their dad's name were James, and that's why they called it the Two James Distillery. And then oh, okay. in this little section of Detroit called uh, Court Town, which is on the back here. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it's really interesting. It's actually one Sarah will actually drink, shockingly oh, enough. Oh, wow. Which we were, it blew up money on Will's mind. I was like, you actually, I mean, I, we both like it, but it's just fantastically interesting. Yeah. That she actually can drink this. Ooh. Honestly, I don't. I wouldn't guess that this is peated. Like if this was blind, it just doesn't smell peated. There's like this kind of. I don't know how to describe it. Honestly, uh, there, it's not like anything I've smelled before. Nope. But it's like a weird sweetness, like a weird florally mm. sweetness or something. Like kind of with fruit mixed into it. I have no idea. Yeah, it's because it's the first. Because this, and I've had, um, I should have said that too. I forgot I had that one. The Kings County peated bourbon. Oh, okay. But yeah, this one I thought was just super interesting being from up, up in Michigan. And it's just different because it's Michigan. And then I didn't send you any, all these are untraditional things that I sent you for the peated stuff. It's not that there really is any traditional American peated at this point anyway. Right, right. So, you know, but. Yeah, I feel like it's mostly kind of like craft distilleries doing that sort of stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, 2 James uh, puts out a lot of really cool products. Put up a really good vodka, really good. I think it's called Catcher Rye. I think it's their rye. Okay. Uh, are they making Smoking Gun? I didn't know they were making Johnny's. I haven't had it. They, people I've heard will complain about them, but I haven't had it, so I can't say whether it's good or bad. But Yeah, I thought that they uh, made that one. I wasn't sure, so that's pretty funny. I, I would love to try it. I'm, I'm, but, you know, I'm up to try anything. So I've heard not great it. things about the Johnny Smoking Gun, but I don't think it's supposed to be that good. Yeah, it's pro <laughs> maybe that's the whole point. It's kind of like Malort. It's not supposed to be good. Yes, yeah. But, yeah, this has just got a – it does have a weird, funky – like yeah. almost like a sour mildew to it. Yeah, yes, yeah. But I like that, that note. Sour. So for me, it's not off-putting. It's just weird. 
yeah, it's very weird. I'm, I want to taste this if you don't mind. Right, <laughs> I'm ahead. so curious. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Cheers to really weird bourbons. Oh, that's so weird. <laughs> it's weird. It's good, but it's weird. That's why I'll always describe wow. it as good, but weird. It's just so unique and different. It's really unique. Yeah. It's, I feel like you get a tiny bit of um, that kind of peated texture a little bit mm -hmm. on the palate. It yeah. really does not taste peated. Maybe just a smidge, but not, nothing. Yeah, it's not a heavy peat at all, which is why I think Sarah can handle this. It's yeah. not a heavy at all. Wow. Yeah, if okay. you guys are bored with your regular stuff you've been drinking, <laughs> just go get a bottle of this because it's the weirdest thing I've ever tasted. <laughs> Whiskey-wise, anyway. Not weird. Oh, I can send you some really funky shit. Oh, gosh. <laughs> that is wow. really bizarre. Have you, okay, so speaking of like weird, have you ever had Long Grow Red, the, what the hell is that one? It's an, Aust an Australian Shiraz finish. No, that, if you ever get a chance to try that, it's 14 it's, cab, I think it was the one that you sent me, yeah. whatever one you sent. Okay, me. you've had that. Okay, that's the only one. Okay, if you ever get a chance to try that one, I want to say, I want to say it was like a 2011, something like that. And it tastes like wet, like wet spinach vegetation. It's really weird Whoa. and it, it's really good, but it's bizarre. That's really weird. It's like, all right, yeah, so that's, that's on my really funky, weird list. Unfortunately, I cannot find a bottle, but I tried it in the vault. And it was amazing, but it's so freaking odd. Yeah, this one is super weird. It's like interesting though. Like you keep kind of want to taste, like you want to taste it again and again because there's a bunch of stuff in here. So usually, not saying I'm great at tasting notes or anything, but like usually I can kind of pick apart something and I can get like a generalized idea of all the notes that I'm getting on it. But yeah. this, I keep smelling it, and I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> like, yeah, it's, I, it's, no like I said, I don't have any other products to compare to this. It's just weird. It just, there's nothing else that smells like this. And that's why I sent it, because it's just unique and fun. Yeah, and oh, I man. just can't put my, put my finger on some of these notes that I'm getting. It's just, like, I think sour is a good descriptor, but mm -hmm. there's other stuff in here, and I'm just like, I have no idea how to explain uh. this. To me, it has like on on the palate. It's got almost like a lavender. That oh, that's is, what it is. It's it's a really weird lavender. They're actually, it's funny. Is there's actually a lot of lavender farms up in that area, um, but it's just got a yeah really mm -hmm. weird like almost not soapy per se. Almost like more like laundry detergent. Like if you ever like nose laundry detergent, yes, I know it's bizarre. But it's got that taste like you would think it would taste like if like if a bottle of Tide. Yeah. It's just got this weird. I think lavender is a really good note. I was like floral, but it's not floral like flowers necessarily. No, like it's, it's like, like something like else. And I think it's lavender. lavender. Yeah. Yeah. Spending the last three summers up in that area, really gotten a taste for lavender. It's like it's dead on lavender. Yeah. 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 It was bothering me. I was like, what is this note? And I've never gotten, I don't think I've ever gotten lavender on any other thing. So now I'm like, okay, now I feel better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you, if you ever want to try like a really try, um, cream to violet has got lots and lots of lavender. And if yeah. you try that, okay. then compare that to this, you'll get it. I do love sugar kitties. Um, what he says that the Johnny smoking gun tastes like the oh, mobile here, one. Oh, here, we go. here we go. Yeah. Mobile one motor oil in a bottle and burnt stink bug in the marble man's ashtray oh, attempt to brew a tea for the Unami taste <laughs> fish gut sauce. Oh, That's like, that makes you like, you have to try it now. I know. Like I, I have not tried Malor or Johnny smoking gun and I just, I just want to try them so I can see what everybody's talking about. You know, it's just like, yeah. Yeah. What's up? So, so wow. Yeah. That one's interesting. Okay, it was really bothering me because I couldn't figure out the note. Um, yeah. But now that I know it, I feel okay now. It was really irritating me, but yeah, mm. for sure. Wow, so nice, weird. Steve. Steve's pouring Maltzilla. Oh, that's a, such a freaking awesome Balconus pick. It, oh, that's from Balconus? Yeah, that's a Balconus pick. That's one of our buddy's stores he did. Oh, with that we had uh, featured it on the show, and then I guess it didn't oh, take cool. very long. Hold on, so I Oh, no worries. Part of lavender is potentially camphor, so some camphor oil or something maybe. Yeah, it's very, it's like, I don't dislike it. It's, I don't know, it's so interesting. It's just so, it's nothing, it's like nothing I've ever had. Yeah, it's, 
I can't think of it. Like I said, I can't even think it tastes like that I ever had. So yeah, it's and you definitely have like thousands of bottles. So. Yeah, it's it's definitely an out there outlier bottle to say the least. But yeah, that Maltzilla is one our buddy picked at a store by us, and I think we featured it in the show. And he had like eight cases left, and I think it was gone within three days. Oh man! So he's like, "Oh well, thank you. That's all gone now." It's like, there you go. You said we were allowed to review it, so it's yep. gone. <laughs> That's cool. Wow. That's a, that is an interesting one. My, my goodness. Absolutely. All right. We'll wow. go to a little bit more uh, traditional now. Okay. Now we are going to down and proof down to was 85. Yeah. 85 proofs. So this is one of the oldest, you know, single malts in America is McCarthy's out of Oregon. McCarthy's. Okay. And this is a three year old, you know, all peated. It's Scottish barley peated, but it's freaking great. Oh, this so, smells really up my alley. <laughs> yeah, so this is all, of course, three years old, aged up in Oregon. So this, I know, is up your alley. This this is one of, said, probably my first American uh, peated single malt. It's, it's oh, heavy. Cool. I love this whiskey. It smells really, really good. Um, and then I, it said three year single malt Oregon oak. So it's yep. aged in Oregon oak. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so it's it's really, really good stuff. So this, if I can kind of, if you, you guys aren't doing the flight with us, of course, but the two James was way more of that lavender, weird floral oh, kind of yeah. thing, not very peated. And then this one smells so much more just like classic peated, you know, yeah. whiskey. I don't know, just right up anybody's alley that likes peat. Oh yeah, like yeah, these guys, like so these guys have been around since 1985. They're doing it right. They've done this for a long time. This is one of the original craft distilleries in america so the fact that 85 is super old for craft so and they're um, just doing it right they it says that uh, so i i researched this just because i was curious but it says that it's made in a holstein or holstein uh pot still yeah i thought that was pretty cool like i've never seen one before so i looked it up and they look it's so it's like a pot still that's heated with water uh and mm -hmm. then it's got a tube that goes over into a column still or a really small column still it looks like yeah it's so. kind of like a i guess the best way to describe it, it's kind of like a hybrid yeah hybrid yeah it's kind of like you know so of course that's what before hybrids ever existed so right but it's there i guess concept of that but yeah it costs about 50 Maybe. bucks if of course it's not too expensive so they're they're very reasonable Ooh, daniel found a lavender and a fremont mischief i don't know that one oh interesting Seattle. Oh. So yeah, that's where I fly in every time I see my mom. Oh, so. Perfect then. I guess you, you know. can try it. Wow, this smells really good. This smells like scotch. It, so, yeah, it just smells like scotch, honestly. <laughs> it, it is interesting, though, what the Oregon oak has done to it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how much the distillation process plays oh, a factor wow. or not. Um, obviously, that's the only still I've ever had like that, but it's it tastes delicious. It's wonderful. Yeah, it smells like scotch, but I swear you can smell a difference in the oak. Like, there's oh, yeah, something, it's, something else in there that... Um, it almost smells like a, almost like a softer oak. Yeah, yeah. Because I'd say it's not like a rotting oak per se, but just it's just like a softer wood. Definitely, yeah. That's a, that's a good way to describe it, I think. Um, yeah. I'll even say it smells like, like a number two pencil. As okay. far as the oak goes on it. Oh, just slightly, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Even and even get a little bit of the eraser and the graphite in here. Yeah, and it smells or it tastes a little bit like just kind of a classic peated scotch. Like mm -hmm. it's very light, but it's got some peat to it. Mm -hmm. A little bit of spice. But I, I swear. I don't know if it's the Oregon oak or like you said, the way they distill it or something, but there's just something that's just a little bit slightly different that mm -hmm. kind of gives it some character. I don't know. It right. makes it different than just like, we're trying to make scotch in America or yeah, something, you know? It's like, definitely their own beast. Yeah. Which is nice. It's, they didn't um, just make scotch in America. That it's its own is, thing. And this is um, three years old. Like, yeah, it's only three years old, which is shocking. It's pretty dang good for three yeah, years old. Unfortunately, this is the only one we can get in Texas, but... Uh, one of our fans sent us a sample of the cast range. Oh my gosh. You probably can get this. I bet you when you go to Washington, I bet you can get some of this. Okay. Like the other versions, I wouldn't be surprised. Mm. Oh. Ooh, a six year old now? Nice. I'd like oh, to try sweet. that. 
Ooh, yeah. That would be That's good. Awesome. Dang, I really like that one. Okay, Ooh. so I'm in, I am going to rank these at just after we get you know, All right. through Sounds the good. first round. Because, uh, yeah, I really like that one. Oh, Gene's drinking some Millstone. Oh, Millstone's good, weird ass rye. It's because it's got a malted rye in it. It is weird, but it is good. <laughs> yeah, he was talking about it on the patron uh, stream before this. Yeah. And he, he was like, I didn't really like it, but he hadn't had it in a while. So yeah. it sounds like he's liking it a little bit more this time around. So it yeah. takes some getting used to for sure. It is a different, totally different rye I've ever had. But I really like Milson all. They do a good. They're doing a good job. Mm, dang, mm. I could drink that one all day, no problem. Oh I, yeah, I kind of figured that for sure. Oh, so good. It is delicious. That's the bomb. They only get better from here. That was sweet because I'm digging that one. Oh yeah, you're you're in for some real treats here. I'm really excited. These all, all right. sound so wonderful, honestly. Like. The, the oh, next yeah. few, just like, oh. Yeah, the next four, like I said, yeah, that's... All right, so let's move on to Andalusia's Reverend Oak, okay. which is, they use Irish peat to make this one. Oh, interesting. And this is out of Blanco, Texas. Wow. One of our buddies that owns this distiller. But yeah, once again, this is a single malt, 100% barley. Ooh. And they handmade their still. And it's it's, they, it's a little tiny still, actually. I think it's, it's not very big. I want to say it's like 250 gallons, something like that. It's not a big still. Um, wow, that's so okay. This is really cool because. So, do you do you know where McCarthy's got their malt? Is it from? I Scotland? don't know where it's from in Scotland. I had I did not look that into. That. No worries, no worries. But it's crazy because so I just did an Irish whiskey flight. Oh yeah, you did that. Oh, you did a whole flight. Oh nice. And I swear to gosh, if I was doing a blind, this like, there must be some character in the Irish barley that yeah. I get in Irish whiskey, but I didn't know that because I'm just like, oh, it's just Irish whiskey. But mm. now that I've had it in American whiskey, it's like you can smell the like Irishness of it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's good There's stuff. Something. Wow. Oh, dang. Yeah, so this is on, I think, two, this one's two years old. But yeah, it's uh, quite this nice. It smells stuff. so good. <laughs> Underproof. Yeah, now they, they are now having of this one um, they have cash strength versions now. You can get single barrels and you can get ones that are uh, finished in Madeira and sherry cast that are unbelievable. Wow. So I think I think you would really like those. <sighs> yeah, so like um, what it's reminding me of, not mm -hmm. exactly, but there's a tropical kind of fruit note that I get on Connemara uh, peated Irish whiskeys. And it kind of reminds me of that tropical fruit note. So not like everything right. about Connemara, but just the kind of lighter tropical fruit. Yeah, anything. that makes sense completely. I, I do love Connemara. That is really good stuff. And it Especially that cash strength. Oh, the bottle that has eluded me. So I actually, I like the Connemara 12 more than I like the non-H stated. Oh, totally. The 12 do you too? Really okay. All right. Totally. I really like it. Um, yeah, I need a new one soon because it's almost gone. Yeah, so I bought it on H. So I had a sample of the Connemara 12, and I was like, yes. And then I got a Connemara and not H. because they didn't have the 12. Yeah. And then yeah. I was like, no, <laughs> this is not as good, dang it. Yeah, I had to get it specially shipped in to get the 12 oh. from some other part in the state. Now, it's, but nobody has the cast strength. It's like, I need the cast strength in my life. I like, only tried it once strength, at uh, up at Iron Root. Robert and, and Jonathan had a bottle, and it was amazing. Oh, that's cool. They have all sorts of fun things that are still <laughs> that are not made by them. Sixty Hertz says Scottish uh, McCarthy says Scottish barley on the label. Yeah, so right. Like, it smells like Scotch, and this kind of smells like Irish a little bit. It's kind of weird. Yeah, we just don't know where in Scotland. We knew it was Scottish barley, we just didn't know where. Right, right. It's coming from. Well, yeah, if you know <sighs> Sixty Hertz, so that'd be great. If you know where in Scotland it's coming from, that'd be awesome. This almost smells um, a tiny bit like a peppermint candy cane. I don't yeah. know if you get that. <laughs> it's like a that. weird, it's almost like cooling, you know, like just like wintergreen. Yeah, just a little bit. Mm, God, it smells good. All right, I'm going for a sip. All right. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, wow. What the heck? <laughs> yeah. That's totally different on the palate than it is on the nose. Completely. 
Oh my goodness. Ooh. What the heck is happening? <laughs> I was so prepared for for one thing <laughs> and then just totally out of left field. Yeah, it's well, so you know we're talking Texas whiskey here. It's a totally different you're like I said, you're down in the hill country, which is a pretty oh. arid climate, but up in the you know, hills. Yeah. But it's it's nice. They have the, this is actually made on a ranch. It's a working ranch. They have a bunch they have a bunch of different animals on it and all that stuff. So it's always mm-hmm. something fun. Yeah, I feel like honestly, you know, I know um Mark Renier is doing like that Waterford terroir kind of project. Yeah. And I feel like it almost th- this American flight has kind of shown me that more than anything else has. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you taste like scotch and you're like, oh yeah, it tastes like this and this and this and this. And it's like, it tastes like scotch also, but you don't realize how much the barley has to do with it until you taste something that's American, you know, and you're like, whoa, this, this tastes like scotch. This tastes a little bit like Irish or smells at least. This one has a lot of weird stuff going on on the palate. Oh, way way different than the nose. Yes. Very different. Yeah. I like their stuff a lot. They just, they do a good job. They're doing it the right way. Yeah. It's, it's it's delicious. I feel like this is a little bit floral, like not lavender, but just floral mm. on the palate anyway. It didn't smell like that at all, but the the taste is a little bit, and it's a little bit dry. Not in a mm-hmm. bad way, just a little bit dry. Yeah, it's a little dry. It's yeah. uh, got a nice oiliness to it. It's got mm-hmm. more like a like a charcoal, almost like used for a grill. Yeah, yes. I call it. Um the floral note to me, it's even more like like baking flour. Oh, oh, interesting. Okay, let me try this again. But yeah, um, I'm trying to think what. Fl- and I would say actual oh, flour wow. is somewhere yeah. across between like a carnation and a periwinkle. Probably my best guess as far as what flour it actually tastes like. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Really good notes, Matt. <laughs> That's like exactly. I can't describe it very well because I haven't had anything like this before. Well, but yeah. One of the things I can ju- suggest in general is go to like, um, you know, I don't know what you guys have an equivalent of like a Lowe's or a Home Depot, whatever, something like go to a hardware store that sells or a garden place. Yeah. Go sniff a bunch of flowers. Yep. That's a good way to learn to pick up on floral notes is to spend some time in the garden. Yeah, I feel like there's a couple floral notes that I know. Um, I also have like a nosing tasting set. I haven't got all the way through it because there's like 88 freaking things and my nose gets super overwhelmed like as soon as I open the box basically. But uh, I I think there's some different uh, floral notes in there. But yeah, going to a Lowe's or something like, like, uh, you know, Whiskey Dick, I think one of the first thing he recommended was like, Sounds kind of weird, but like go to a grocery store and like yeah, totally. sell a bunch of stuff and like you know just yeah. see what you, what you can get out uh, of it. The worst place for me is like I go nowhere near a Bath and Body Works because that's just like overload and like I can't go within ten feet of that damn store. I'm like, yeah, yeah. no, that's a hell no. Because all I do is pick up scents like crazy. My kids are like, how do you smell everything? This is bullshit. How do you know what we're doing? I'm like, because I can smell everything. Yeah. Ooh. Wow. This one's crazy. Look, 13. I still want to try that one. Haven't had Brussels 13. I haven't either. No, I think, I think somebody may have sent me a sample. I can't remember. I think somebody did. So what next time I go up, I think I'll have some. But... There you go. Yeah. I really want to try that one. That's for sure. Oh yeah. No, it's not blind. So orig- we had two uh, samples that were blind at the very start, but then uh, we're just going through a American kind of malt for the most part uh, flight and, and we know what it is. So yeah. Yes, she got to do Pappy Fifteen in the in the Chickapin yep. tra- old charter crazy. at the beginning. Fun times. So yeah, I I personally like um, the what was uh, the McCarthy's. I liked it more than the Andalusia. Um, Not a surprise. Yeah, that was just is a little bit more my jam. You know, yeah, yeah, totally. The, the Andalusia is really good though. I like it. It's just um, it's just a little different, and I just prefer the McCarthy's. But yeah, it's good. Yeah, because this bottle of Reverend Oak here, I didn't have it at the time, is 131.62, and it's a heavy peat. This is a lower peat. This one's a really heavy peat. This one I got here. That were, uh, our buddy AJ let us borrow this one. It is amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, like that, that's their standard offering, the one I sent you. But, yeah, if you ever uh, get a chance to try some of their heavier peated stuff, it's blow your mind. Really good, yeah. It's really, really good. Yeah, yeah they're I doing just... some... 
really cool stuff out there. But I like the the texture of it more. Mm. I think just more there's more like flavor and texture that comes through. I think just because it's a little bit higher ABD. So it'd be cool if the McCarthy's had the, the same ABV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would yeah. really love that. Yeah, like I said, they do have a cash rent that I just I have oh, a sample they? of. That's amazing. I've just never seen up. The only thing we get in Texas is the standard. Oh, I would love okay. to get a ball of cash rent, but yeah, it's, oh, it's that would be amazing. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Joe oh, says the best whiskey is Mountain Dew. What? <laughs> true. This is true. <laughs> well, you know, back in the day, that's the Moonshiners called it. Mountain Dew is moonshine. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. So, I was like, what are you talking back about? when Mountain Dew came out, on the original cans and bottles was a moonshiner. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you I heard that and, it was like a, a whiskey type thing, but I wasn't I wasn't sure the the history of it. That's cool though. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's that's where it comes from. It's it's funny. Yeah, you have to go look at some old commercials from Mountain Dew. They're pretty funny from back in the day. Oh, Brimstone is amazing. Have you had Brimstone ever? Oh, Never. Another time, I'll have to send that to you. Okay. That uses scrub oak, and it's super smoky and super awesome. I feel like Balconis is doing some weird and cool stuff. Balconis is just, it's always something new. I, I think I've got like 40 different expressions from them. It's insane. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, how do you create this much different freaking whiskey? This is absurd. Kind of like Bricotti back in the day or something where they're just like, we're just going to make a bunch of random stuff. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty like, much. And that's cool because they're just experimenting. Like, I think yeah. experimental stuff is what craft whiskey should be, you know? Exactly. So. Oh, now this one, I'm really interested to see what you think of this. Okay, so which one are we going to? This, we're going to go to Spring 44. Okay, so I'm really a, excited about this This one. <laughs> was one of the whiskeys, like, this is one of my really early craft ones that I Thankfully, I had a buddy uh, in Colorado send this to me. That uh, the Whiskey Vault talked about this. Oh my gosh, was this seventeen? Maybe. Oh wow. Maybe it was seventeen. Oh my gosh, this thing is just. What the hell? Yeah, this I, I got to see what notes you come up because I, I I'll give you mine after you give me yours. I have some really fun notes for this one. But yeah, this is like I said, this is once again this is single malt, hundred percent barley, hundred percent peated. So this is yeah. If you like Pete? This is definitely the whiskey for you. It's a, it's yeah. It's oh, a spring forty four. It's just magical. Wow. Yeah, it's hundred. This yeah, it's is banana. I mean, no, it's not bananas. Like the note, bananas. Yeah, I think bananas right. like crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Oh God, I love this whiskey. It's okay. So I there's again this kind of like weird note that I don't know what it is. So you'll probably tell me that later. Um, but I get like. It's like fruity and like leathery kind of. Mm hmm. I would agree with that. Like a little bit of like. To me, it's like. Oak or something, maybe a little bit. Okay. It's like you took an apple and it got like slightly mushy and browning, like after you like oxidize this when it's been bit into. Mm -hmm. And you kind of rubbed it like on a, like a leather belt. That's kind of okay. what it reminds me of from the yeah, fruit yeah. standpoint. Wow, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got, like, the fruit. And, see, when I was thinking fruit, I was actually thinking more, like, kind of, like, darker fruits. But when you say apple and the leather kind of com combo thing, it makes a lot of sense. Wow, how yeah. weird. Yeah, I could see, like, plums. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not, like, totally crazy a ton of dark fruit or anything, yeah, but yeah. just, like, on the fruit side i feel like it's a slightly darker i even would there. say it's more the skin of the plum than the fruit of the plum. i was thinking yeah like even when you said apple like i get the inside of an apple too but the skin of the apple is kind of what mm. i was getting at first like there's just something i don't know dang it smells it smells so good and so weird <laughs> it's like i said these are all gonna be good and weird almost like um, oh man, now I'm getting like Granny Smith. Yeah, there was like this tiny little bit of tartness at, at just 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 mm -hmm. for a second, and it kind of reminded me of that. Um, I feel like, and I don't know if I just always get this with leather, but I feel like there's like a smidge of like tobacco in it as well. There's like, I feel like leather and tobacco. I seem to yeah, they pretty much go together. Comorbidly, you know, or whatever. But okay, I I just have to taste this. So. All right. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. 
Mm -hmm. What the heck? Oh, God, that's so good. I feel like it hits you about what you would think on the nose. There is like a little bit mm. of a difference, but not as much as um, that other one that we did. I can't remember which one it was, but. Mm. Oh, God. It's good. It's so good. Wow, what is that note? Dang so it. So different. All right, so for me, this I call this my NASCAR race whiskey. Because <laughs> seriously, this is burning tires, oil sheen, gasoline, melted Legos. <laughs> melted Legos? Yeah. It's, you know, it's just delicious. Wow. Yeah, this is the one they hold out at the checkered flag when, the, when they're going by at the end. Dang. I don't know if it's just because you're saying it, but yeah, the tire thing is just ridiculous. Yeah, it's like when they're smoking out on the tires, big yeah. time. Yeah, this is wow. just magical stuff. Yeah, it's one of my absolute so favorite whiskeys of all time. It also, and I, I don't know, it kind of that, along with that, like, smoky tire note, I guess, like, almost kind of roasted a little bit. Like, not roasted tire, but, like, a little bit of, like, a roasted flavor. I don't know. Yeah, it's so weird. It's, the funny thing is, too, but it's also, like, super sweet. That's the other weird thing about it is it's this super sweet, yeah, like apple pie. Oh. Man, this is weird. It's like it's like um, it's yeah, even got like, like a little cinnamon and like and it, white peppers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whoa, this is so weird. <laughs> I know. That's why I love it because it's weird as hell. This is what happens, guys, in your whiskey journey. <laughs> you just like you <laughs> you ramp up to a point where like nothing <laughs> excites you anymore, and you're like, I gotta have the weirdest freaking crap that I can imagine. <laughs> Sugar Kitty, that is exactly correct. As a kid, some of my Legos were sitting on the dashboard of a car while we were in Florida. I actually think I know what that smells like. Yeah, I don't know what burnt Lego smelled like, but like the tire note is definitely like smoked hot tires. It's very weird. Mm. Yes, it's it's definitely unique. This is a, this is definitely a love it or hate it whiskey. It's there's I don't think there's a whole lot in between on this one. I feel is like I'm in between. I feel like I'm in between. I don't know. Like I definitely don't hate it, but. Um, it's just so weird. Maybe and it maybe takes a little while to wrap your head around. Like uh, Adriana was saying, when it's brand new, it's hard to uh, hard to identify what the heck is going on. I feel like that's probably what's happening. Like whenever I do a review, I sit first off. I have the dram multiple times uh, right. over like the whole week, but uh, I'll sit with it for quite a while and just kind of just pick it apart. And I feel like you got to do that with each of these but for like 30 minutes at least at a time <laughs> and we're you know mm -hmm. obviously don't have that time but um this these are all really interesting ones to just like yeah this is a nerd out sit in the corner for like you said for 30 minutes to an hour but yeah it also is it's like i said it's got this like sweet vanilla honey mm -hmm. finish on it to me it's yeah even chocolatey it's just, it's it's a really sweet peat to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so interesting. Wow, what the heck? Yeah, I definitely have never had anything like any of these. No, that was the point <laughs> to crazy. <laughs> do crazy peated American whiskeys. Yeah. So, but yeah, wow. it's it's fun. That one's it's lots of fun. I just, I just really like this one. I just, I like, I like really strange whiskeys because it's something unique and different. Yeah. When you've had a lot of whiskey, you're like, what else is different? What, what can I try that's new? That's right. truly a new note. Yeah. And this to me is just that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I feel like everything here, you know, I think I'm having a, a, a loss for words moment, you know, because oh, there's good. some notes that I can get. But then yeah. there's a bunch of stuff where I'm like, what is going on? You know, and if you've had like a ton of Highlands or a ton of Space Sides, I feel like there's a lot of notes that are similar. And then there's maybe right. a couple things that are different. And you can mm -hmm. kind of pick up on those things. But this is like almost everything is different. I just, it's like your whole mouth is just like, what the heck are you giving me right now? It's so, it's so different. Oh, yeah. It's definitely different. 
It's pretty cool. I feel like I'm half Shay Lammered from that the freaking <laughs> blind one and blind two. I had so much of well here, I'll show you. Did you finish one. the first one? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah oh, you did pretty much for that. Oh wait, is that Pappy? Oh dang. One was, yeah. I wanted my freaking husband to try it. I drank it all. Dang it. Oh well. Ah oh, shoot. Um, I thought the other one, I was like, oh, I still have some left. Perfect. So yeah, I had a whole ounce and then almost two ounces before this started. So it's entertaining for all of us. <laughs> yeah. Oh goodness. Oh. Wow. Ooh, lost spirits. That's good stuff. All right. Let's move on. See which one's higher. I guess you should probably do this one first. Okay, which so your one? choices are one that's 63.5, or maybe it's 65. Don't say 65.2. Okay. I think, and then 52.5. So one's a corn whiskey that's finished in uh, peated barrels and port barrels. And then the other one is the peated from uh, Balcones. Balcones. So what would you prefer? A lower proof? Super oxidized. Just try that tiny little bit. <laughs> I feel bad because I drank all the freaking whiskey. <laughs> Oh, well. So this is what Pappy tastes like. It's slightly oxidized. Probably very slightly oxidized. Mm, it's all good. It's okay, though. So what do you think? About, you want to do the peated and port or just the peated? The oh, high proof? gosh. Maybe the peated and port just because it's so much less proof. Okay. And That's then so we can good. do the Balcones. I feel like the Balcones is going to be better. Yeah, it's better. Okay. All right. I just so. wanted you to experience it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so peated and port Icarus, which is from Iron Root. But yeah, it's a corn whiskey that's then finished in peated barrels and then into uh, port barrels. Okay, so, so that one is D. All right. Oh, wow, you can smell the port straight away. Absolutely. Wow. Now, I poured last year's instead of this year's because I can't find this year's that I sent you. It's somewhere. Oh, no I moved. I had it sitting out for like a couple of months, and I moved it the other day, and I don't know what I did with it. I'm like, oh, well, such is life. Gene's got a good point. He would yeah. never know. So he just had a sip of it, uh, the what, the tiny little bit that was left in the bottle, Left, yeah. And then the little bit in my glass, and he said he's had better. So I just wanted him to know what it tasted like. Yeah, it really exactly. Bad. He's had better, exactly. <laughs> Okay. Wow. Yeah, so yeah I feel like this one, that port really comes through on the nose. Um, Absolutely. A ton, just a ton of like fruit, stewed, stewed fruit. Mm-hmm. Totally agree. Mm, dang, that's good. Mm, it's just a beautiful thing. And like every year they use like several months older, every new release of it. Oh, okay. I feel like... um. I'm getting a lot more port than I am peat. Yep. Uh, on the nose, at least. Sounds about right. Yeah, because the yeah the one you've got is 48 months, and this prior one is uh this one is 39 months. So yeah, okay. every year they get a little bit older. Fine by me. Yeah. Yeah, if you ever get a chance to, because I don't know how much of the iron ore you've had, but. So I've had uh the Harbinger XC. Okay. Yeah, and by the way, I just feel like so cool. But uh, freaking licorice. Yeah. Freaking commented on my video, and I was just like, "Nice, I've made it." <laughs> there you go. It was really cool. He yeah, he said that if I'm ever in Texas, we'll we'll do a we'll do fun stuff. <laughs> you should go. It's always a good time going to Iron Root. That is yeah. always the best. That's my favorite distillery to go visit, probably because yeah, every time Robert and Jonathan have something fun to do. Yeah. No, I I really want to go meet them. I think it'd and, be cool. Oh, yeah, they're really nice guys. It, it's funny because, you know, especially a person who likes really weird shit, it's like, what weird shit do you have in here today? Yeah. And, they, and, of course, them, they love doing all sorts of crazy experiments. They always have fun, wild shit in there. That's cool. Especially all the different corn varietals. I'm like, see, and then you nerd out on the corn varietals and different things. So I go to other distilleries, and I'm like, I start asking them about it. like, why do you know that crap, and why do you want to know this? I'm like, I'm a nerd, and I enjoy about weird things like this. In no, fact, don't ask why, just tell me. <laughs> exactly. We went to one of them and they were like, Well, actually, we thought about those. Do you know that those are I do know someone. They're called they're called Iron Hood. They know all about this crap. Yeah. So they actually I don't give them their number so they could talk oh, to that's them cool. about it. It was that's pretty cool. funny. Oh yes, they, they are definitely the coolest people. I'll yeah, see them again like in a couple months. That's awesome. 
Yeah, you should probably see them. Robert comes here every so many months. He comes to the house and hangs out. We have a good time. That's cool. We can never get Jonathan to come because he's like, I don't like to leave Grayson County. It's just, I just don't like to leave it. It's like, <laughs> whatever. So I got to bring good whiskey to you. Fine. Mm -hmm. mm, wow. That's super oily. Oh, it's crazy oily. You can taste the non silk wow. orchardness. <laughs> it's so oily. I got to say, I just, I uh, love that. I know it's only 90 proof, but that yeah. Harbinger XC. I'm just like, thank you so much for not chill filtering this. I appreciate it. It's like, it's Every, dang everything good. they make is good. Even their vodka and gin is really good. Yeah. Yeah, it's it. They make fantastic stuff. <sighs> dang, this is really good. Mm hmm. It's super sweet. Like yes, ridiculously sweet. Mm hmm. Yeah, like you said, the port really comes through. Yeah, the port really comes through on the palate. It's so sweet. Wow. Hey, Dare Burger. What's up, homegirl? How schmedium? What's in the glass? We got freaking Iron Root Icarus Corn Whiskey. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, the, the peach Water. there, it's like a nice finish of the peat. So it's not a ton of it, but it's just it's just that just enough to know it lets you that's there. Yeah, I feel like there's just a tiny, tiny little bit of like a smokiness. Um, yeah. I feel like that. I I wouldn't say that the port like dominates necessarily because I think it's yeah. a nice balanced whiskey, mm. but um, I think you get a lot more port than you. Oh, do absolutely. Um, but yeah, it's really nice. It's this is very good. Yeah, they yeah, uh, like I said, every yeah. batch gets better and better. Yeah, that's my jam. It's super rich, man. It just, and every time you nose it, like mm -hmm. I keep nosing it and I'm like, God dang, it smells good. And then I'm like, dang, it smells even better. <laughs> so oh yeah. It's, it's, I think it would better. better. Oh wow. <sighs> dang, yeah, this is just... making me really happy. Oh yeah. Like I said, you can do a whole stream just about iron root. And those are yeah. always a great time. Mm. Shoot. Gosh dang, that's yummy. Mm-hmm. Well, now I'm kind of sad. Well, I mean, we'll see. I don't know what Balconis is going to taste like, but I'm like, that's oh. probably my favorite. <laughs> but yeah, that stuff's delicious. All right. So, yeah, this is the peated um, from this is the original peated from Balconis. Okay. This is three years old. I think it's 65.2. Their handwriting's yeah. like mine, so it's hard to read. That's what my sheet says. So. Perfect. And I guess I'm glad I wrote the same thing on your sheet then. <laughs> we'll go with it. <laughs> yeah, because what other Balconas have you had prior? Hmm. I don't know if I've had any. Oh, shit. This is your first one. That's hilarious. Or maybe I've had one other one, but honestly, I can't remember. I get so many samples and I try to yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I'm it like, I can't remember, much, but yeah. I don't remember having one. So, yeah, this stuff is ridiculously dark. Hello, Texas. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I mean, Texas that, does. Yeah, that bottle is, I mean, look at that. It's absurd. And yeah, this that is looks like a 25 year old first fill sherry cask or something. Yeah, for real. <laughs> I do have an Old Rosso sherry cask, and that was 48 months. Oh my God. It's mm. amazing from that. Dang, this smells really freaking good. Oh, yeah. Balcones is fantastic. Wow. One of our other good friends of the show, for sure. Oh, Man, God. this is so so like the other one was like fruitier and then it was like oilier on the palate. This yeah. one is like super rich smelling on the nose. Like I haven't had the palate yeah. yet, but like it smells like like dark brown sugar and like mm. deep, I don't know, like oak. Ah uh, mm. yes, yeah. It's okay, just, this, this makes is, me really happy. This is signature Balcona's backbone and then they peed it. They pretty much all have the same similar backbone on them. See, so Gene said, like I said, the single malt was one of his of the year. Yeah, the rye has chocolate rye in it. That's one of the reasons oh. it's either have to like chocolate or not like chocolate. That can be divisive on their rye. It okay. tastes nothing like any other rye I've ever had. It's not traditional rye. Even though it's 100% rye, it's just totally different. It's mostly oh, Elmont rye. But yeah, there's crystal chocolate, and I forget what the other one is in there. But it's, but it's a four-grain rye. That's all rye. Oh, yeah. It's like 
kind of cinnamony to. Okay. Yeah, it's this now. This one to me has lots of dark fruits. Yeah, it almost smells like Oloroso. Like almost, it agreed. almost smells like Oloroso. Like yeah. super dark, just well, like a darker version or something. Like. Oh, dang. Yeah, so and this good. is also um, Golden Promise, which is a six row bar. Oh, that, cool. The okay. same one that McCallum uses. Oh, neato. Okay. Yeah, Golden Promise isn't super common. No, it's not super common. I heard it's, it's also, a B to work with. <laughs> it's a real pain to work with, and it's also expensive, which is one of the reasons that McCallum is expensive because they use Golden Promise. Yeah, when you go to six row over two rows, six rows is so much more complex and hard to break down. Dang, I feel like this is, again, I, I think all of these are, but this is one especially that you could just sit with for like an hour and just, I mean, oh, yeah. I feel like there's super strong main notes that you get, mm -hmm. like the brown sugar, the dark fruit, that right. sort of thing. But then I think there's a bunch of little stuff that maybe it's overshadowed by those things. And if you yeah. sit with it for like an hour, I think you would just really get into it. Oh, dang. This smells yep. so freaking good. Oh yeah, Ross Fuzz, see? Josh was correct. He wasn't just fanboying, he was right. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, like I said, I've got like 40 different Balconas. It's, I like all of them. There's not one I don't like. Glenn going uses. I mean, I, if you think they do, they probably they do. I'm not sure. Apostle, I don't know. I do love Glenn Goyne, though. They do make delicious whiskey. Yeah, I have a, a teapot dram sample mm. coming, coming to me. That'll be my first ever. It'll ruin me on Glenn Goyne because I'll be like, what the F is all this Wait, other wait. Stuff, is this going to be your first Glenn Goyne? Yes. Oh, my God. They started with a teapot dram. <laughs> Andrew, Andrew Butler. Uh, he was like, hey, I got a bunch of stuff. What do you want? And I was like, I want this one, this one, this one, this one. So I'm having Deanston Palo Cortado because freaking Roy nice. talks about it all the time. And I'm like, I need to try it. And then um, good, Teapot yeah. Dram is another one. So they're, I'm just going to ruin myself, amazing. but I'm fine with it. The you, teapot you do that dram. to me too, though. You, yeah. you give me the good Jura, and then I'm like, I'm going to have Jura 10 and be like, this doesn't taste like the 17-year grand yeah. or 18-year or whatever it is. So Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I didn't send you any crap. That's for sure. You oh, got all wow. the good shit and spoiled you. Holy bananas. It's really freaking good. And like I said, this is the first expression of it. And I have the 20 and the 21 as well. And they're just fabulous. Wow. Oh, I'm glad we ended with this one. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is definitely the last one to end with. Yeah, especially the proof and the, yeah. It almost, wow. Wow. I'm just so happy right now. It will definitely take you to your happy place. I wonder, gosh, I mean, it does not seem that peated. I mean, there's a little bit of smoke. It's not it. heavily peated, correct. Each year gets more and more peated. Wow, there's like so much going on right now. I feel like there's a little bit of a... Tobacco note on this one mm -hmm. as well. Oh so, yeah, most balconas will have that. Yeah. Dang. And there's a really nice, there's like a little bit of spice. Like it's very sweet mm -hmm. on the palate, but it's right. It's like rounded, but there's also some spice. I yes. don't know how to explain it. Mm. Yeah, it's um I was just a lot of there's a lot of cinnamon on this one. There's yeah. a lot of uh, allspice, coriander. Um there's even like a little bit of, like lemongrass on there. Oh, yes, yeah. And and oh, then it's got no. this like Earl Grey tea finish as, as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just it's just really good. Yeah, I there's definitely a tea thing going on. I feel like I always get like tea, tobacco, and leather. I, I'm not saying that this one necessarily has leather, but like I always yeah. get those three kind of like together when I get them, you know? Yeah, I could uh, see that though. But yeah, I get a little bit of the tobacco and then the tea. It's really nice. It's super dark. Like, yes, I don't know how else to explain it, but yeah, it's, dark. it's all dark. That's it. Yeah. And, and I know this isn't finished, but like we were saying like earlier, I think that dark uh, fruit thing, it mm. kind of reminds me of Oloroso. And it just yeah. reminds me a little bit of that on the palate. Like, it doesn't taste like an Oloroso scotch or anything, but there's 
that dark kind of almost like a raisin or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it totally sweet. is. It's raisins, dates, Ugh. things like that. It's it's delicious. Dang, this one's so good. It is. It's it's so good and it's cash strength and it's just freaking amazing. It, it's amazing this thing is three years old and just the unbelievable flavor you get on this thing. Yeah, but I am purring like a whiskey filled kitten, as Roy would say right now. <laughs> yeah. By the way, Roy has all these sayings like purring like a whiskey filled kitten. Can we just get a t shirt with a freaking kitten like over it with like a tiny little Glen Karen next to it? Like, You're hilarious. Come on, he needs to do these things. Dang, oh, this is so sage, good. yeah. There's definitely sage too. That's a good call. Oh, that's a good note. Oh, this one's making me really happy. Now I really want a bottle of this. Yeah, they usually release it once a year. Dang it. It's amazing. Ooh, that smells so good. I'm telling you, you need to come to Texas and go shopping. Yeah. I'm trying to drive to Texas, though. There's not much stuff you want to take back. Oh, man. Too many bottles. That, that, that'd be your problem. Is like, so, you, need, you need a damn U-Haul. I gotta say, okay, I'm thinking, so that's obviously my number one. Like, duh. That's funny. Um, and then I think the Iron Root is my number <laughs> two. Okay. Oh, they're so good. Thank you, Matt. God. You're welcome. So can Sarah drink this? No, she hates this. Oh, she hates this? Oh, so they've got another one. What is it? This year's that is it's a peated finish in a Sauternes cask. Ooh. Oh my god, it's so good. Ooh. Um, but it also reminds you of like a petting zoo in the and all the freaking poop on the ground. It's it's it sounds more it's amazing. No, yeah, like I think I know what you mean. Like kind of like a barnyardy yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, thing. Like, yeah, totally. And it's really good. Do you want a picture of me to use? I don't know what you're talking about, Sugar Kitty. Are you talking to somebody else? You might be talking to somebody else. Well, I think he means the cat. Oh, oh. I think, I you know, you. on their, on their uh, what do you call it? I was little, thinking, it's, yeah, their, their little, like, emoji or whatever it's called. Whatever you want to call that. Whatever that little thing's called. The circle I, thing. Yeah, the circle thing. I, you have no idea. Almost every gosh darn stream, I say that thing, and I cannot remember the name of it. Somebody will put it in chat and remind me, but it, I'm like, the little icon thing. Um, yeah. Wow, dang, really that Balconis is yeah. so good. Okay, so Balconis is my favorite. Iron Root is my second favorite. Okay. I think it just depends on your mood, honestly, because they're oh, both totally. delicious in their own different ways, mm. um, but I like the Balconis a lot. And it's yeah, yeah, they're totally super different. fruity, and it's giving me a Texas hug, I guess you would call it. <laughs> and oh. it's wonderful. Um, and then I think... Um, okay, let me just try Spring 44 again. Okay. Just to see where it's at oh. in my rank. All right. Wow, it's so weird. I like weird. it, but so it's good. so weird. It's just a beautiful thing. Okay, so I think I got my rank. Okay. So, Balconis, Peated Single Malt, first. Okay. Iron Root, Icarus, Corn Whiskey, second. Uh, McCarthy's... Oregon single malt is my third. I just love it. It just tastes like scotch. Um, oh, but with its own, like, unique spin. Which right. Is, um, and then I think... Mm, I think Spring 44 might be my fourth. It was back and forth between that and the Andalusia. Okay. Um, is my fifth. And then the two James J. Riddle is my sixth. That's where we're at. Makes sense to me. Yeah. These... I'm, like, so sad that I don't have a lot of these. I have, yes. I have like a pretty decent amount of Z. You know, it's there you I'll go. be okay for a while, but it's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really sad that I don't have a bottle of this. Mm. Unfortunately, I can't really help you with that. Oh no, no worries. I no, thank you so much for just giving me the experience of it because oh I just yeah. love it so much. Like I said, they only come out once a year, so it's like once they're gone, they're gone. Well, and uh I was reading a thing, aren't they like distillery? Aren't they like at the distillery or something? You can get them at the distillery, and then we'll usually get them in Texas, but that's about it. They usually don't leave yeah. the state. So right. we get them at our liquor stores, but that's about it. Yeah, it's just like iron root. We get all the really badass iron root here, and all everybody else gets is Harbinger and uh, the, the 90 and the 115 proof, and mm -hmm. that's about it, mm -hmm. which I'm fine with. Yep. Because okay. it's wonderful. 
yeah, that Balcones. So if you if you guys see Balcones peated single malt, or just go to Texas when they release it because it's worth mm -hmm. it. And then Iron Root Icarus, that is the bomb freaking holy bananas. And then uh, I really like the McCarthy's single malt. That's that's really good. If you want an American ish style with a little bit different kind of oak thing, uh, just get that because it's wonderful. Oh. Sorry, my husband is. Uh, Apparently using a grinder wheel or saw or something. Oh, like, what the hell? He always seems to be doing something while I'm filming. <laughs> he stays pretty quiet for most of it, though. So okay. Well, it sounded like the combination of like a vacuum cleaner and a toilet flushing. Yeah, he's, uh, I think it's his little battery powered saw thing, you know, like one of these. I don't know what they're called. Wow. Getting <laughs> Alaska? Nice. Yeah, hey, Thrasher. What? Okay, go eat something. Oh, dang. I'm really happy and really Shay Lambert because these are very high proof. These are so good. Yeah, Balconus is the freaking jam. Iron Root is a freaking jam. McCarthy's the bomb. Whatever. That's all you guys need to know. Dang. I wasn't expecting that, honestly, because I've heard like mixed reviews. I don't think of this necessarily, but like sometimes I've heard people say like they don't like, um, what's it called baby blue or something like that which oh, is yeah, a totally blue. different thing yeah, yeah but i this is i haven't had balconis before to my knowledge and so i was like i don't know i thought maybe i wouldn't like it i wasn't sure but holy bananas it is really really good so joe joe appleton says metallica whiskey is good okay oh ross you got some balconis up here in alaska that's pretty cool that is cool. Yeah. I know Alaska's actually got some cool distilleries up there. I know North Pole has a distillery. My sister used to, the I know is my sister used to live there. Oh, that's cool. Because her they were stationed at in Fairbanks. So oh, yeah, okay. now, they're, now they're stationed in Virginia. And they have some other good Virginia distillery. I haven't tried it yet. That's supposed to be good, so I'll have to try that. Yeah. Uh Whiskey Mountains. Are you learning Texas funk? Like I feel like the Iron Root um the harbinger that I have had like a tiny bit of a funkiness to it. I don't know. I feel okay. like this Balconis doesn't, it doesn't seem to have like a ton of funk on it. I think it's got so much other crap going on though. Like wonderful, delicious stuff. Um, I don't know. Do you get like a funky thing on, on this one? It's its own thing. It tastes like Balconis. They all taste like, they all have this same backbone on them. It tastes like, or it smells like freaking a cinnamon, a cinnamon roll with like caramel in it or something. Yeah, if you do like an entire Balcones flight, you'll get this same backbone to all of them. Okay, well no. I'm gonna love freaking Balcones then, because oh yeah, if you like this, you're gonna you're gonna be in heaven. Balcones is like one of my favorite distilleries in the world. So Dang. them and Iron Root, by far my two favorite Texas. Yeah, yeah these out of the out of the six, those are my favorite. This is just. It's like mind blowing. It's mind blowing. Like it's mind blowing the fact that it hasn't been around that long. Right. That's the part that's. I mean, the, the entire Texas whiskey scene has been around since I think '08. I mean, this is a new product here. And they've done just for whatever reason is just done. We've been very lucky to have really great distillers and just amazing people making whiskey here. Oh dang! That freaking tastes so dang good. Well, you know, the funniest part is Balcona started in a little crappy shop underneath a bridge i mean really oh yeah they started this little crappy 25 2500 square foot thing and now it's the new one is sixty five thousand square feet it's oh amazing and that's not including their other warehouses that's just what's on the site of the distillery that's so crazy and it's like you go in there and it's all funky weird ass experiments and it's just fun yeah they're doing it right for sure that's yeah, you pretty much think of some weird ass barrel. There's something in there, probably finishing in it. And then in fact, their rum is also amazing. Oh, I bet. I know, you know, I don't know if you know rum or not. Yeah, I've got a rum from that's uh, what is that thing? A hundred and thirty nine, something like that. It's Ooh. really good. It's yeah, the I only feel like thing. You just knows this all night. Just oh like, yeah. And just be just so happy. I would agree. It's beautiful. Oh my god! Thank you so much, Matt. You're welcome. I'm, I'm glad you're lost for words right now. <laughs> Except, See, that, oh my that gosh, this smells job so good. Completed. That's all that matters. What'd you say? That means job, ac mission accomplished. For sure, for sure. Yes. Job completed well. Now I, 
want a bottle of Balconis. I have, since I've had the Harbinger, I've wanted another bottle of Iron Root, and now I definitely want another bottle of Iron Root. Yeah, you need to travel with Iron Root. Harpies, honestly, like, yeah. it's, it's different than those two, for sure. Like, oh, yeah, they're totally, totally different random. Things, but, um, but really good. Like, if you want more of a Scottish style, those, and then the two Texas ones are just, like, freaking amazing. Yeah. It's like their version of Texas scotch basically and it's yeah. totally different than scotch obviously but although the funny thing is you know back when just the original the original single malt uh won uh -huh. it, that's won some, a bunch of awards against scotches which is fun wow yeah so that, and that's yeah, this, really good this would be really interesting in a lineup like if you could throw in the iron root not to say that it tastes anything like scotch but like no darker older maybe a little bit of sherry scotches and then just throw mm. this one in there and just see how it does because it's amazing like it's yeah it's they've got good. some special ones coming one's finished in Armnet, one's in pinot charanto so yeah they've got all sorts of wild stuff there dang it so yeah i, I do love that everybody's willing to experiment here in texas with just fun things uh, oh yeah four stir that's delicious stuff as I got on Balconos, must be the heat. Nice. It probably, I'm sure it is. Yeah. Have you had four square rum before? Oh, uh, no, no, I haven't. Uh, oh. Everybody talks about oh. it and I, I want to try it, but I haven't had it. It sounds good. really good. Yeah, I've got, I don't know, seven or eight different four squares now, oh, something yeah. like that. So, wow. That's cool. Yeah. They're quite delicious. Yeah. If you, they're, yeah, if you ever get a chance to try a four square, that's definitely some stuff you want to try. Yeah. Yeah, people said it's worth it, so I'm gonna oh, totally. I'm gonna give it a go next time I next time I see. Well, I haven't ever seen one, but I also don't look in the rum section. I just look in the whiskey section. So I understand. <laughs> I need to go check it out, but <laughs> this is the problem. Then you get into other spirits, and then you get really end up in trouble. I know. I'm like, honestly, I cannot go down another rabbit hole. I just can't. <laughs> so I, I'll try that, and then I gotta like just make sure I don't buy any more because <laughs> mm. it's uh it's gonna be bad. Just, Ooh, or not, it's gonna be bad. Or like, I'm gonna get down into it. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can. Bad. It's bad. Just got first four square 2008. It's nice. so good. that's a really good one. Dang, yeah, yeah. And just like those, like, like 60s Hertz says, you know, those whiskey drinkers rum, there's whiskey drinkers gin and vodkas as well that are amazing. Yeah. They're really good. Um, like I said, people like, like Liquor Hound, you know, he does he reviews everything. Uh huh. I'll go to his house and it's like. All right, well, all this crap's good. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> now that's the problem. Is, you know, he'll introduce you to all these really other amazing products that you would have ever even considered. Yeah. And it's like, oh, son of a bitch, this stuff's actually good. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, I want to. I think that's just our our way is like we get into this and then we just go like down oh, yeah, the rabbit hole. Full I think board. whiskey enthusiasts in general, or just enthusiasts of you know things that are similar, you sure. know get into these rabbit holes and it's like i don't want to i want to get down a rum rabbit hole because i'm sure it's wonderful but mm -hmm. i'm like i just there's enough whiskey i just i'll try a couple of rums but i can't yeah can't yeah. go too bad because <laughs> yeah because then you get into other ones like diplomatico and things like that are just fantastic and you just oh. and then get real expensive real quick yeah yeah that's the other problem right so yeah you just you just never know of course whiskey is expensive enough as it is let alone other spirits yeah i'm like I just I just have a whiskey channel. That's that's what I'm gonna do. So I might do a rum every once in a while, but you know. Yeah, we, we did one I guess for like <clears throat> it was International Rum Day or something. I think it's, I want to say it's sometime in August. I think. Uh huh. I can't remember. It was last year we did one. It was fun. Uh, well, entire one as thrilled as I was, but I don't care. <laughs> it was fun for me. Yeah. There you go. So, you know, like Swami likes to drink a lot of rum, so. Oh so yeah entertaining all that stuff yeah they get a lot of cool rum up in canada we don't get i heard vodka is pretty cheap oh what is very cheap <laughs> but you can make it 24 7 it tastes like crap yeah. most of it yeah because maybe not the iron yeah. root stuff but no no that stuff's actually really what i've found is that like the craft distilleries make really good craft vodkas uh -huh. that are made for whiskey drink because yeah. they leave a little of the grains more or less in them and so they just taste so much better than they don't have like most taste like and, rubbing alcohol. They don't right. taste good. Whereas right. theirs have this really nice uh, oiliness to them and they just actually taste good. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's one of those things. <sighs> okay. Maddie. I think you're good. You got me pretty Shay Lambert. I'm just going to Oh, I know. It's pretty entertaining. <laughs> so I need 
could go eat food. <laughs> eat food. <laughs> See, I'm telling you, you need more practice of this. This is what you got to get. We got more practice. Oh, man. I I feel like I'm decent at holding my liquor. Like, decent. I get a little Shea Weimer, but I don't get, like, yeah. you know, like, loud or, like, super annoying. I just right. get tired and a little... We don't. Little you don't want to do 35 at one time like we do? No, no. I would have to do the freaking Fred Minnick spin. I could not do that. No, we can do. I think. I think most people does around forty. I was like, we can do it. It's pretty great. I know you guys do little sips, but that's got to be a rough Tuesday. Nah, you you get used to it. You're young. You haven't had enough experience of drinking. That's all. You'll get there. You, you need about another fifteen years of drinking. You'll get there. Yep. Eh. Yeah, I just gotta <laughs> acclimatize myself. Whiskey Mountain says I'm not even rapping, so I'm not too Shay Lambert. <laughs> you guys want to rap? Oh God, that's. Oh, uh, we can do a rap. We can do a rap. Um, let's see here. I gotta think of one. David likes food. Well, food David is good. Likes food. Who doesn't like food? Food's delicious. Um, dude, I don't even know if I remember the words. To this I don't one. know. The real question is, what are you gonna eat after this? Oh man, probably some tofu salad wraps. I know that doesn't sound good, but they're that pretty good. Sounds horrible. They're pretty good. I make a wicked peanut sauce, and then the tofu is marinated in some delicious spices and See, stuff. There's a thing called chicken. Much better. Oh yeah. Sadly, I can't eat chicken. What? Horrible. I can't. Uh, yeah. So I got freaking you know, like food poison or something from one. No, no. I I have like a bunch of medical freaking BS Ooh. wrong with me. Um. Oh, so I basically have to be on like a vegan. Oh no. Diet. I eat a burger every once in a while because I freaking love burgers so much. Yeah. Um. But yeah, basically, just health wise, I'm get I'm good. My cholesterol is getting down. Um, I haven't checked my fatty liver, but that's been like a year and they say it takes time to like, it does take itself or whatever. And then, uh, fish tacos. That sounds really good too. Um, but yeah, I got this thing called, what is it called even? I don't even know. It's, um, spondyloarthritis. I was trying to figure out what's wrong with me for a while, like the last two years. Yeah. And then we finally got diagnosed just like last week. So. Oh, well, at least, um, at least you know now, right? Yeah, I know, right? So so she said basically non-inflammatory diet of um, okay. of basically like vegan food and shit. Yeah. Um, and I have to drink this stupid freaking kale smoothie every morning. I just put a bunch of fruit in it so it doesn't that taste disgusting. Awful. It's awful. It, but basically it's like medicine. It helps my cells Ooh. repair themselves and all this jazz. Okay. Um, and then I have to exercise every day because exercise makes it better, I guess. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I'm just uh, doing swimming. We have a tiny little pool that we put in, so I'm just swimming ah, every day. And that's there you go. That's cool. That works. Yeah, it's not too bad. So we'll see how it goes. I just got it like a couple weeks ago, so it's probably okay. gonna take some time to like heal it or whatever. But sure, um, yeah, I, I know all about fatty liver. It's all good. I totally yeah, understand. yeah. But yeah, that um, the spondylosis thing. I guess it's like genetic and chronic so i can go into remission but i'll always have it because it's like a genetic thing but i won't always be in pain hopefully fingers crossed (laughs) so yeah so but it's cool because i've been like wondering like i i have all this uh like neck back yeah all that stuff uh pain and i was like i'm 24 it'll go away you know and it's like two years later it's like nope (laughs) this is a chronic Mm -hmm. condition so at least i know now because does whiskey affect it in here? You're good with whiskey. Oh, I probably shouldn't be drinking it, honestly, because um, no. you're basically ha- it's uh, a ton of inflammation. So, like, yeah. it's inflammation that causes arthritis, basically, uh, in all my joints. Because um, I have, um, what's it called? Undifferentiated peripheral spondyloarthritis. That's what it's called. Basically, it just means it affects my spine and my, like, shoulder and knee and stuff. Super. Uh, that sounds really but correct. inflammation makes it worse. So, you're not supposed to have, like inflammatory foods like delicious things like donuts and sugar and <laughs> burgers and all the things that yeah, happy. Good stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah so um but i don't think i'm supposed to be having alcohol either but i'm not gonna give that up because <laughs> it's my job <laughs> well not really my job but you know, you know it's kind of like you know i remember the doctor told me he's like yeah if you're gonna drink at least drink good scotch that's all that matters there you go i was like yeah. that's right like, that's Good I don't time. drink that much. Like exactly. I, these flights are yes, but like the rest of the week, I barely drink anything. Yeah, I might exactly. have one gram, and it's like a tiny, tiny dram, you know. Right. So, 
I think it'll be okay. I talked to my doctor and let her know, like, because I wanted to know. I was like, this sure. is how much I drink. I drink a flight of like six to eight whiskeys once a week. And then I drink maybe one or two just for the, the review right. for the next week. And she was like, oh, that's fine. You just can't get like freaking drunk every night. And I was like, sweet. <laughs> so well, that's a plus in general that causes yeah. many problems. Sugar rots your bones. Yep. There we go. Mm. You're giving up enough. Don't give up everything. I know. Right. Yeah. Like exactly. and every once in a while, like I just had a freaking we don't have like very good burgers down here, but there is Carl's Jr., which is not that bad. Like compared to the other burgers that you can get down here, it's so I had two burgers. I had the original burger and I had a Western whatever the heck burger with onion rings and barbecue sauce. Oh yeah, good and stuff. I thoroughly enjoyed those. And now I have to go back on the just regular. Nothing, none of that for a while. Mm. But every like month or something, I I get some delicious. And once a month, it'll be fine. Yeah. All good. Okay, sorry guys. So Shay Lambert right now. I gotta get off the stream, as I said earlier. <laughs> okay. Love you. Peace out. Thanks, Maddie, for the You're deliciousness. Welcome. And I'll see you guys on Thursday for the V Pub. Don't know what we're doing on the V Pub, but it's gonna be good. Or it won't be. I don't know. And then next week on Saturday, we're gonna do a cigar and whiskey pairing. So we're doing young whiskeys. My patrons voted on all the whiskeys they want me to drink. And then we're going to do an Oliva V Lancero. That's the mm -hmm. cigar. So if anybody wants to join along. Cool. Oh, the whiskeys are Buffalo Trace, Elijah Craig, uh, uh, Bullet, because it's like a younger whiskey thing. Um, what else? Oh, jeez. Woodford Reserve Double Oak, uh, Bell Mead, and one other one that I can't remember. So if anybody mm -hmm. wants to join along next week, that's what we're doing on Saturday. So. Yeah. Sounds like fun. Okay. Thanks, Maddie. Peace. Love you guys. Cheers. Have a good weekend. Cheers.